Have you ever pondered why certain advertisements prompt you to open your wallet while others fail to elicit a response? The answer may not necessarily lie in the ad itself, but buried deep within brain. Dive into the captivating realm of neuromarketing, an innovative discipline that amalgamates neuroscience and marketing to comprehend and shape consumer behavior. Neuromarketing transcends the mere selling of products and delves into the reasons behind our buying actions. It unravels the science steering our purchase choices and explores the ways marketers can manipulate brain's responses to different stimuli. It is the magic key to transforming doubts into certainties and refusals into affirmatives. Let's scrutinize one of the most triumphant neuromarketing campaigns ever launched, Coca-Cola's Share a Coke campaign. At face value, it was merely an ingeniously simple concept. Substituting the iconic logo on Coke bottles with popular names, coaxing people to share a Coke with acquaintances. However, beneath this straightforwardness lay an influential neuromarketing maneuver. By introducing personalization to their product, Coca-Cola successfully exploited our brain's inherent longing for recognition and uniqueness. The sight of our name, or that of a loved one, on a Coke bottle, sparked an emotional reaction, establishing a deeply personal bond with the product. This association not only propelled sales but also nurtured brand loyalty, making consumers feel that Coca-Cola was directly addressing them. Additionally, the campaign fostered social sharing and interaction at all levels, appealing to the basic human need to form connections with others. This ingenious utilization of emotion and personalization to shape consumer behavior epitomizes neuromarketing in action. Therefore, the next time you find a product irresistibly appealing, pause and ponder. It might not be the product that's enticing you, but the manner in which it has been marketed to your brain. And don't forget, neuromarketing isn't about manipulation, it's about understanding. You might not even be aware, but your brain is incessantly under the radar for marketing. So what's the breakdown of neuromarketing? How do corporations utilize this fascinating process? Essentially, neuromarketing employs the principles of cognitive neuroscience to comprehend the subconscious likes, thoughts, and choices of consumers. It's about tuning into those barely noticeable neurological reactions that we as consumers don't even realize we're experiencing. Here's a simple way to picture it. Traditional marketing methods are based on conscious, spoken feedback from consumers. But neuromarketing? It delves a little deeper and investigates the intricate processes of the brain to comprehend subconscious, nonverbal responses. Essentially, it's like having a hotline to the consumer's thoughts and emotions, eliminating the necessity for spoken feedback. One of the most potent weapons in the neuromarketing toolkit is brain imaging technology. Functional magnetic resonance imaging, or fMRI for brevity, enables marketers to monitor live brain activity in response to stimuli, it's akin to having a backstage pass to the brain's performance, observing firsthand which areas light up when exposed to specific triggers. Let's use Frito-Lay's Cheetos revamp as an example to illustrate this. In an attempt to decode the popularity behind Cheetos, Frito-Lay turned to neuromarketing. With the aid of fMRI, they identified that the brain's pleasure centers were activated when consumers indulged in Cheetos. The snack's vibrant orange hue, the satisfying crunch, and the messy residue left behind combined to create a sensory experience that was deeply gratifying. This insight enabled Frito-Lay to enhance these aspects during the redesign of Cheetos, resulting in a product that was even more tempting to consumers. The outcome? An incredibly successful relaunch with a notable spike in, but it's not solely about making products more attractive. It's about understanding the deeper subconscious motives behind our purchasing decisions. It's about acknowledging that our choices are not always logical, but are frequently influenced by how our brain reacts to stimuli. It's crucial to recognize that our brain's reaction to triggers often dictates our purchasing choices. Neuromarketing, a powerful tool indeed, but it begs the question, is it ethical to use this tool to manipulate the mind? We find ourselves venturing into the deep and complex domain of ethics in neuromarketing. This journey compels us to focus on two pivotal components, consumer autonomy and privacy. Consumer autonomy signifies the freedom consumers possess to make autonomous decisions, or in simpler terms, the right to choose. Now when marketers utilize their understanding of our subconscious triggers to mold their strategies, are we truly exercising free choice? It's quite plausible that neuromarketing, if mishandled, could subtly erode this autonomy, surreptitiously influencing our choices without our conscious realization. Moving on, let's explore privacy. 
Neuromarketing mandates a profound comprehension of our brain's reactions, normally procured via technologies such as EEGs or fMRI scans. This deep delve into our psyche, if used irresponsibly, could result in privacy invasions. This isn't just about securing data but about safeguarding our most intimate thoughts and emotions. Now let's illustrate this with an example. Some of us may remember Facebook's emotional contagion experiment. They altered the news feeds of almost 700,000 oblivious users to research how emotional states could be communicated through social networks. The repercussions were severe, with both users and critics questioning the ethical legitimacy of conducting such a psychological experiment without explicit consent. This Facebook experiment serves as a stark reminder of the potential ethical pitfalls that neuromarketing could stumble into. It emphasizes the necessity for transparency, informed consent, and respect for individual autonomy in neuromarketing practices. To sum up, it's evident that neuromarketing, like any potent tool, has the potential for both use and misuse. The responsibility then falls on the shoulders of marketers, regulators, and us, the consumers, to ensure its ethical application. Neuromarketing, a potent tool indeed, but one that demands serious ethical contemplation. The conversation surrounding these ethical issues is not just essential, it's crucial, as we tread the delicate balance between persuasion and deception, between comprehending consumers and violating their personal boundaries. So what's the essence of neuromarketing? To begin, it's a powerful tool that leverages our subconscious desires to sway our spending habits, often without our knowledge. It operates by studying our brain activity, discovering what truly captivates us and spurs us to buy. It's a fascinating yet slightly troubling testament to progress in neuroscience and marketing. Moreover, neuromarketing brings into light the question of ethics, probing the line between influence and manipulation. It emphasizes the need for us to be mindful buyers, scrutinizing and understanding why we make certain purchases. So the next time there's a strong pull to buy something, remember, it could be your brain reacting to some smart neuromarketing.